Welcome traders, that's 2 p.m. UK, British summertime. Almost coming to an end for you guys over there. Here in sunny Mallorca today, it's 27 degrees in the sunshine. Okay, let's, uh, let's get going here. Before we get started, quick audio and visual test. If you can hear me and you can see my screen, the welcome screen, the tip welcome screen, you can type a Y into the chat box uh, so that I know we have... Uh, Audio and visual ready to roll. Good stuff. Uh, before we start the presentation, uh, important for today, risk disclaimer. Obviously, we all should be aware of the risks uh, I associated with trading uh, CFDs through Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. But equally important for today is that any views expressed by me are solely mine. They are not indicative of or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. For those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. Uh, my name is Patrick Munley, and after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. I essentially had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what were going to be pretty significant losing positions. I gave back all my gains and ultimately took a sizable six-figure financial hit. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is, uh, is an understatement at best. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading. And I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk, man risk management approach. Most importantly, though, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly there, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused really just on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategies oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you accept and understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. In 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering again annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm engaged in other uh, market orientated projects, I guess you'd call them. I am, as you may know, a resident uh, market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell. Uh, providing an in-depth daily market outlook 
breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide uh, daily technical trade setups for two to three, well, well, sorry, probably more like three to five markets now. Uh, you can actually track those through TradingView here. You can uh, subscribe to the Tickmill Ideas account here, and you can see I post uh, pretty much daily now setups through this account, and you can track the trade development as price action uh, price action develops. So I uh, strongly suggest you, uh, you actually I'll post that link for you into the chat here. There's a link there that uh, will give you direct access uh, to that to that group. Um, and then more recently, I am um, also charged with running Tickmill's rapidly expanding e-mini strategy group. Let me change the slides and see that. Um, it's a group, that's a, a free group where I provide daily uh, specific trade plan uh, for the cash US trading session uh, for the day ahead. Since its inception uh, from April this year, I've delivered over 1,200 points of upside. And just this week, well, it's going to be starting on Monday, we've actually launched a, a Telegram channel. Uh, this is for uh, traders who have a funded Ticknell Futures account. What this will give you is access to the, the channel, which has uh, institutional research posted there on a daily basis. Uh, we're covering all the uh, e-mini, uh, sorry, the e-mini and e-micro products, right from the stock market indexes through commodities, uh, Forex and crypto contracts. Uh, you'll also get access. I run uh, two automated trading models, uh, specifically trading in the e-mini S&P 500 and also in the gold futures market. Um, we're, I'm syncing up those algorithms to provide real-time trade alerts into that, uh, that Telegram channel. And what you'll also get as well in that tele Telegram channel is uh, live stream sessions during the opening hour of the cash trading session for the e-mini S&P, where I'll be sh sharing in real time my observations and analysis and, uh, and sharing my trades, calling my trades in real time as well. Uh, so for those that are interested, uh, you need to uh, message me your, um, uh, your Ticknell Futures account number, and then I'll provide you with a link uh, that means you can access that channel. And like I say, we're launching, the full launch is going to uh, going to be on Monday. Uh, so that's something else you might want to uh, might want to think about taking a look at if you're interested in those products. Let me, I'll post the link for the Facebook channel. Let's put that in there. So you can access, uh, you can access the free trade plan every day anyway. Uh, that's posted as a video uh, before, the, uh, before the cash session opens in the US. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's now take a look at the charts. So we are going to start here with the S&P 500. Um, as for those who are in the uh, in the Facebook group, you know, been pretty, uh, pretty bullish on the S&P, uh, certainly after we got this pullback. And, uh, and once we held that support area at 43.19, we were looking for the break of this internal descending trend line resistance to set up the extension uh, higher. And, uh, and we've seen that play out. We're now coming into a pivotal test here of the prior all time highs. What I would bring to your attention, and something that I certainly uh, pay attention to, is we have got a bit of divergence here uh, in play, a little bit stretched in terms of the short term momentum. We've had a big rise. Uh, over the past week. So what I think uh, we're, we're potentially heading into is probably some profit taking. Maybe we just take out the prior all-time highs, but certainly I'm going to be watching for this, uh, this momentum divergence to be addressed. I'm not calling a top or anything like that. All I'm suggesting is that we can see a tradable uh, correction here. Certainly to my mind, what I'd be focused on would be uh, the equality objective. Let me just blow this up a bit and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. When I talk about the equality objective, we've got this swing here, this prior correction. So if we overlay the that swing there. And so what we could see, um, to my mind anyway, is as we get up into these highs, that we get a pullback equal to the last correction. That would take us back into uh, this 44.31 area. 
And you can see we've got a lot of volume traded through that zone. And so that would be a natural area for prices to pull back after making a new high. And then we watch their, what are the horizontal bars on the left? Uh, their, their volume, their volume bars, volume profile. Um, so uh, what we're looking at then is this pullback into the support zone, and then we'll be looking for bullish reversal patterns. And certainly we could think about if, if this is, if we're just working on simple uh, wave theory here, um, we would have uh, five equals one. So depending upon uh, where we find our high, maybe we just take out prior highs. Then what I'm looking at is this sort of scenario where eventually we actually into, um, into the back end of, uh, Sorry, um, guys, if you've got questions, can you just make a note of them? And at the end of the presentation, I'll open up a QA and a and I can, uh, I can walk through that stuff with you. Um, or you can put them into the chat, but I just won't answer them during the session. I'll answer them at the end. So feel free to type any questions you have or pay you'd like me to take an instrument you'd like me to take a look at. I may not cover in my deck here and I'll, uh, I'll jump into that at, uh, at the end. So uh, that's what I'm looking at, a pullback from wherever we uh, potentially find a, a top here. Uh, and then we're gonna be looking to re-engage on the long side to, uh, to join in with what I anticipate is gonna be a run higher into the year end that uh, seasonality is very favorable into the Christmas and uh, a new year. So we'll see, how, uh, we'll see how this plays out, but certainly I'm looking for a, an interim uh, peak to be put in in the coming sessions. NASDAQ, <clears throat> NASDAQ was a trade uh, setup. We were tracking, we got the move into uh, the support zone here, got this bullish outside reversal candle, which was the trigger on the long side through that 14,780. Uh, 14, and we've taken out the descending trend line resistance. Um, so can you zoom in your presentation? So we have, uh, we've traded it up into the, uh, this prior highs here and we're seeing a bit of a resistance come in now. So what I'd be, a similar st story really to the s and we overlay this corrective leg here. So what we're looking at now will be a pullback uh, potentially from current levels in the NASDAQ and we get a retest of the broken descending trend line resistance to act as support, we've got the monthly pivot there. 15,000 is the level there. Uh, so any pullbacks into that zone, we're gonna to want to watch for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side. And the NASDAQ, its pattern currently would suggest um, a, if we're looking at just a, a simple wave theory here of uh, the fifth wave equaling the first wave, we'd actually have a retest. Uh, ju that just brings us into the prior cycle highs here, up into 15,000. Uh, 734, but the trade as posted in the uh, in the trade view ideas is running 500 points plus in profit. So it's uh, it's working nicely there. Just remove that, avoid confusion. The Dow, Dow has an interesting pattern here in terms of um, an expanding, uh, expanding, megaphone type top scenario could be developing here uh, for the Dow. And so what we'll be watching, or what I'm going to certainly be paying attention to with the Dow is, um, is do we get this scenario where we trade up into the uh, ascending, projected ascending trend line resistance, and then get a very steep pullback into uh, the projected descending trend line support to complete then what would actually be a, a bullish consolidation pattern to take us up into um, up into new highs there in the Dow. Dow has been a bit weaker um, than well, Russell has been the weakest, but the Dow has lagged the S and P and um, and so, uh, and the Nasdaq in the run up and has put in more of a consolidation pattern, which suggests to me that uh, coming out of uh, coming out of this consolidation, we could see the Dow actually take the lead here. We'll just have a look at the Russell. Have we got the Russell here? Is that, yeah, the, take a look at the Russell as well. Because that's it. This is a nice consolidation pattern. And um, this one suggests that we should see a fifth wave extension. So again, working on the premise that any fifth wave objective at a minimum is going to be equal to the first wave, then that gives us, um, we can 
use this um, consolidation base to give us a target on the upside there of 20, 27,000 in, um, in the Russell. So a couple of ways you play, a couple of the ways to potentially play this. Why are they gonna retest this descending trend line resistance again, and then get a pull back into the base once more, and watch for bullish reversal patterns engage on the long side. Or we're actually, we take it out, we, we take out these highs, and then we recheck the broken sending trend line resistance and support, and then that acts as the base to catapult things higher up into the uh, up into the target zone. You can see from the volume distribution, this is the highest traded volume area um, over the past uh, eighteen months. So this is uh, this is this is to my mind at this stage anyway is an accumulation pattern. And, um, and then we look for an extension to the upside and accelerate them up into the, um, up into the target zone. Alternatively, obviously, and there is always, uh, there's always an alternative, is that um, we actually fail to break to the upside. And then what we'd be looking for would be a breach of the trend line support here. Um, so something like this, we get back in here and we take this out. And then what we'd be watching for is the first pullback to test that prior support zone as resistance. And that could set up a move then down. Uh, we'd be rechecking the yearly pivot and these, uh, these prior highs over here. So two scenarios. My preferred scenario at this stage, given the seasonality and how we're set up at the moment, is that, uh, is that we run this up into the fifth wave objective here at the 27,000 level. And like I say, there are a couple of areas to just monitor for your, uh, your potential entry points there. Do note though that we do have this active momentum divergence at the moment. So it's, uh, it's not crystal clear which way we're gonna go. But like I say, because of the seasonal aspects and, uh, and the current market positioning, uh, all we'd like to see is a break through this descending trend line resistance and the, uh, the momentum study here to, uh, to break out as well. And then that would be the, the green light for, uh, for long positions and taking, uh, taking this higher to its fifth wave objective. Um, another one we've got running here is the uh, DAX. <clears throat> We're looking for bullish reversal patterns from the test here of the 14,700. We've got those and, um, and a trade triggered at uh, 15,280 and has run up uh, 300 points or so here. But Pay attention now because we are sitting right at this uh, this descending trend line resistance. Potential bull flag scenario they're developing. So I mean, I still uh, I'm still interested in this to uh, to extend higher. And if you're not in the trade, certainly what you can be thinking about is any closing breach of this descending trend line resistance is an opportunity to add to long positions. And um, and ultimately, what we're looking for is a recheck of this um, broken. Descending trend line resistance here. You can see it. One, two, third touch, fourth touch rolled over. Uh, if we can get through there, then I'd look for us to recheck that from below and potentially extend up into the ascending trend line resistance uh, up into the 17,300 area. So there's, uh, there's still room to run in this one, uh, to my mind. And certainly, if you're not in the position, then there's an opportunity to add on a closing breach of the descending trend line resistance. DXY, we'll take this up on the futures chart. Um, so the DXY has, has duly pulled back from the yearly pivot double top scenario, had some momentum divergence there. Let's just draw this in for you and see what I'm talking about. So we've got some momentum divergence. Now we're testing some pivotal support. And this is really going to see now if the dollar can, uh, can pick things up here. We've obviously still got that background market dynamic of, uh, of the taper talk. Uh, coming out of the Fed, we've got the important FOMC meeting November third, and um, and you know if they come through and uh, and give us a solid indication of when uh, tapering is going to commence and potentially talk about rate moves, then I think there's another high to come in the dollar index, and that will kind of be the uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact scenario. So uh, pay close attention to. Uh, news wires at the moment and how the Fed are setting up into this um, into this FOMC <coughs> meeting because I think that could that could be the catalyst to drive us into this one more one more high in terms of the um, in terms of the dollar index 
and then we'll see if the, uh, the bears are going to step back in and take things lower. Certainly, I think we can think about a minimum correction equal to this leg here uh, from wherever we eventually find our, our peak here. But we've been trading pretty nicely within this pitchfork channel for now. So while support remains uh, at that 92.80, you can see that's the highest volume price as well uh, for this uh, past 18 months. Then whilst we've, we've maintained support there, then we can still expect, or I'm expecting, uh, the potential for one more high in the dollar index. Uh, gold. <clears throat> the pitchfork trade that I highlighted, again, I posted that on the um, trading view account, uh, started to work well, broke the, broke the internal descending trend line resistance after holding this, the pivotal test of the pitchfork. And then we've um, we've run into some resistance here at uh, 1780, trying to see if we can get through there. If we do get through there, the, the area of huge interest to me and could be um, significant, especially if we think the dollar is going to make one more high, is uh, is a test here of this, this third test. And I always pay very close attention to the third test of this descending trend line at 1836. Now that could actually set up the move for the big corrected target down at 15.20. So uh, we'll see how gold trades into that zone. Silver, interestingly, has led the charge um, through its internal trend line resistance. So what I'll be looking for now with silver is probably runs into some resistance here in the midpoint, um, 24.75, maybe a deep inverse head and shoulder scenario to set up an equality objective. And when I talk about equality objective, what I mean is wherever we get our swing high here, We'll be looking for an equal leg, so that will put us up in 2560, and then this descending trend line resistance uh, may cap things for silver. But if we get through there, then we start to think about range resistance up to 30 again in terms of silver. Now, crude oil. This is an important one at, at the moment, and it's important certainly because of its um, its implications. If you, I, I don't know if, how many of you were trading 2007, 2000. Uh, 2006, 2007, and it was the surge in crude prices that ultimately was the, the initial catalyst to, uh, to take the markets down heading into 2008, 2009. And we're seeing quite a surge here in crude at the moment. Obviously, um, we have seen you know, pretty much a run across in all of these energy-based, uh, energy-related commodities, but crude is the one I'm paying really close attention to, and I'll show you some targets now we have in play. So again, Thinking in terms of um, simple wave analysis and the idea that fifth wave should equal the first wave. So this is our first wave. This is our one, two. This was our third wave. We have a perfect equality objective test, complete wave four at 62.55. So what we do is we measure from 62.55. And that gives us a the target there of 94.45. And it coincides with this ascending trend line resistance, and that would be the third test. So I'm gonna be paying really close attention. Um, let's see how we could draw this in. So what I'd be looking for is a pullback like that, and then this wave equal to our first wave. So I'd anticipate we get some sort of pullback in the current, in the current area. And we'll just put in a little channel here as well, and some, Confluence. Oops. So, if we think about a pullback into the 81, 82 level, and then that sets up the extension to the upside to challenge this, uh, this 94.45 area. Um, that if we get up into those prices, that's going to put a bit of a lean on uh, on the equity markets, and so uh, this could be the, the catalyst for a pullback in terms of the equity markets. But for now, uh, we're looking to engage on the long side. Again, what we do want to be cognizant of is we have momentum divergence in play here. So what what I anticipate happens here is we get the pullback, uh, we find support, and that allows the uh, momentum study here, psych indicator to roll over a bit, maybe test the midpoint. And then as price extends up into that fifth wave target, what we'd actually look for 
would be uh, another attempt into the, uh, the descending trend line resistance in terms of psych indicator. So that sets up then triple divergence and triple divergence oftentimes will lead certainly to a pause, correction and even reversal. So as that, if this plays out as I anticipate, then what we'd look for would be a nice uh, three wave move then down into test support back into the prior highs here at uh, the 76 handle. So crude is one that's, um, that's on the radar. Uh, there's an opportunity, I think, potentially building on the long side, looking for this fifth wave objective. And then we want to pay attention to the, the momentum dynamics and see if we get an opportunity to, uh, to put a fade in there and, uh, and trade this back down into the, uh, the third, third wave high here and that ascending trend line support. Uh, let's take a look at Bitcoin, obviously, in the news, making news. We um, have been talking for a while now about this 75 handle in terms of Bitcoin. So what I'd be looking for here, we've just taken, obviously taken out the stops above the market, which is a nice setup, get into this pitchfork resistance and uh, pull back like uh, something like this would be ideal and then sets up the extension into that 75 target. Actually, we could even extend higher here because if we're going to suggest that uh, we're in the third wave at the moment, then uh, we'd actually get a five equals one, uh, sorry, five equals one that would take us up into projected ascending trend line resistance. Uh, we can start thinking about 80,000 there in terms, of, uh, in terms of Bitcoin, looking at this pattern and setup. Most of the high volume node there is the 57,000 250. So any pullbacks into that 57,250 um, zone will certainly draw attention and will be an opportunity to reload on the long side. And then we look for the test of the ascending trend line resistance up into 80,000 uh, heading into the back end of this year, even. Um, let's just take a look at some of these majors now, wrap it up. Uh, euro dollar, looking for the euro dollar to, uh, looking for another low basically in the euro dollar. And then I think we can see a more meaningful correction. So watch for any tests of the descending trend line resistance, weekly range resistance, uh, 116.85 is, uh, is where I'd be looking for reversal patterns to set short positions. Um, a couple of, actually, I just want to highlight a couple of uh, scenarios I'm watching here. The Euro Kiwi, I'm going to just pull up a weekly chart here. As I, uh, I posted this in the trading view those that are following. We are testing here a really big weekly trend line support. And uh, it's got a couple of structures there at this um, 162 handle. So what I'm going to be watching now on the daily is, um, is for a reversal, a key day reversal. We want to get a close back through a prior day's high, essentially. So we've made the new low, and then we get that close through the prior day's high. And that would give us an opportunity on the long side uh, to play for at least uh, a bounce back into the 165 handle. Similar story here in the Sterling Aussie. We're testing now, I'd highlighted this again through that uh, through the trading view accounts. We're testing an equality objective here and we've got this ascending trend line support. So I'm watching to see if we can get a bullish reversal pattern uh, from this area, set long positions and certainly think about a retest of descending trend line resistance 186.65. Another one that's also of interest to me, uh, is the dollar South African Rand getting a nice reversal here today. And um, if we can close back through yesterday's highs, I think there's a long setup here. Certainly we want to be thinking about a retest of this neckline. If we can get through there on a closing basis, we have an equality objective at 116.07. And the, uh, the actual inverse head and shoulders scenario here has a technical target up at 17.58. So those are a couple of, certainly the Euro Kiwi, the Sterling Aussie, and, uh, and this uh, South African Rand are ones that I'm going to be watching on a closing basis. Also, just so we run out of time here, uh, all these yens are sitting right at some pivotal resistance. This is the Kiwi yen looking, getting a reversal here. So certainly for me anyway, because we've been in this bullish extension, what I'd be thinking about now with this Kiwi yen, and I'll be looking at this tomorrow morning, certainly if we, uh, if we get a bearish close here, looking for a, an Asian range break uh, scenario, but I'd be looking for this type of pattern to play out uh, with the Kiwi Yen. So there's certainly a tradable corrective move here um, from below 8160s back down into the uh, 7990 area. 
And we've got similar stories in the Aussie and the Aussie M hasn't, the Aussie is potentially in a double top here, but no, no divergence. So I'd, I'd pass on the Aussie M, I'd prefer the Kiwi Yen. Swiss Yen, it's got a bit more work to do to check its uh, trend line there. So we'll pass on that one. The CAD Yen, CAD Yen is sitting right at its uh, trend line here. So pay attention to some of these Yens. Uh, I'll be updating these, um, I'll be updating these in the uh, the trading view account over the coming sessions but i see a bunch of opportunities developing uh in those in those pairs specifically uh so that's uh that's me for now those are the markets i'm tracking the opportunities i see uh, the, uh, in terms of uh the main trade that i've got running at the moment is short uh, short the dollar and i've rolled down uh, stops on that to uh, to just above uh, the three day high there at 93.95 um, but I've got a bunch of these indexes running as well, and I'm watching those uh, those forex pairs that I talked about just then as uh, as opportunities in uh, in coming sessions. So with that said, uh, have you had done, uh, so let me open this up for questions. Let me first of all take a sip of water, guys. Uh, the red candles are bearish, the green candles are bullish. Uh, yeah, these candles are a little bit different to normal candles. I use a, a five period um, volume weighted average price. And so if price is trading above the five period volume weighted average price, they'll be color, colored green. And if it's below, they'll be colored red um, is, the, is the deal there, uh, Cornelia. Uh, ben, I'm sure you said this before, but I use figure trace and figure extensions. I never use the pitchfork. It makes you select this tool, I you know, but yeah, I mean, again, Ben, um, 15 years of staring at these charts, I could, uh, I, I don't know, I wouldn't actually need to put the pitchfork on, I just do, I do it really so that um, people can see. But again, if you think about, um, uh, I've, I've used this analogy before, if you think about um, a plumber or an electrician, uh, you know, they, they have a bunch of tools in their toolbox that they can use depending upon uh, the situation they're addressing when they go to a house or an office or whatever. It's the same as it's the same being a trader. I, um, you know, I have probably 10 or 11 tools that I use depending upon the market condition and depending upon uh, almost to a higher degree now for me for, because I've been doing this for a long time. It's like subconscious pattern recognition. I can see what, what tool will be most effective for the current market setup. So that's kind of um, that's kind of how I apply or, or use the pitchfork. Um, so does it is it kind of measure of sport music? Um, yeah, it, it is. It, it's um, it, you'll get a, you. I mean, if you if you Google this, you could spend the rest of your life reading about pitchforks and the frequencies and the harmonics, etc. It to me, it it simply. It's giving you a good reference point. Or, or it's giving you a good reference point of um, dispersion within a trend. And when I talk about dispersion, what I'm saying here is that this midline. If we just talk, look at this midline here, price rotates pretty nicely into it, away from it, into it, away from it, into it, breaks it, then back to it. So that would be the midpoint, uh, or easily is, is 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 the reference point, the median point, and price hasn't really dispersed meaningfully or, or certainly you think about this being 100% and that being 100% there price hasn't really moved 100% out of that range so um, what would be significant here would be a close above the midpoint of the bigger channel because then what you can think about and statistically um, there's a high probability that you will then go up and test the upper parallel certainly you think about this parallel first as a first target and then this is your second target the, the, the scenario, the way it's traded, people trade it differently. The first pullback to the, uh, the lower parallel is a long position that targets the midpoint. And then you take profits there and you wait to see, do we retest the lower parallel? Yes, we do. And then we break out to the upside and off we go. Yeah, I, I'm, um, I, I trade predominantly, uh, uh, predominantly Cornelia, the daily chart. So this is daily time frame stuff here. The, the it works on it works on obviously it works like anything else if it's if it works on one chart and it's uh, it's consistent then because of the fractal nature of markets it must work on all time frames 
Okay. The difference is you get this on a minute chart or a five minute chart, you've got to make a lot of decisions and understand the, the, the price movement of the instrument you're trading in super quick time. So for me anyway, I don't like being rushed in decision making. I prefer to take my time, understand the, the context and parameters. And then I, then I, you know, I, I like that. that's how I trade basically. So for me, I'm looking at the daily and the hourly time frame, and I'm looking at these uh, these instruments. Obviously, I trade the, the futures on a lower time frame, but that's using different tools and a different uh, process that allows me to to effectively uh, make decisions there and uh, a little quicker. Um, how do you trade multiple time frames? So the multiple time frames approach, um, I trade. Yeah. In the futures, in the e-mini futures uh, group, Telegram group, I'm, I, I'll be trading predominantly um, hourly and five-minute charts. So I use the, the dual time frame aspect of the hourly and the five-minute charts. Um, but like I say, the, the majority of my, uh, let's say, CFD trading is done on the daily time frame. Uh, the reason why with the futures I'm able to use lower time frames is um, some specific market internals that I use that, uh, that allow, us, allow me to make uh, solid high probability decisions on those lower time frames. Um, do you have a link to an online resource where I can learn the basics of trading? Yeah, Henry, um, I will, uh, if, you, if you drop me an email, Henry, I'll, I'll, post, I'll put my email in here. Um, If you want to drop me an email and uh, I'll point you in, uh, in the right direction. Uh, are you going to trade based on? I, I, tra I, I, tra I trade on technicals. Um, I am well versed in the fundamentals. To my mind, everything that's known in the market is in the price, the current price. And so if you understand the fundamentals, um, you can then understand what the catalyst may be for the technical pattern to play out. That's how, uh, that's how I, I think about things in terms of fundamentals. So I, you know, I have a, a, an abundance of knowledge uh, with respect to the fundamentals, but my prime driver for executing the trade is always a technical pattern. So yeah, Henry, can you see my email address there? Patrick.Mungley at ticknellpartners.com. If you drop me an email and I'll, uh, I'll point you in the right direction. Okay, guys, uh, we've, uh, we've run the, uh, how did you become well-versed in fundamentals? Yeah, there, if you, again, drop me an email and I'll point you in the right direction for some uh, resources coming in. Okay, so I am going to wrap this session up here. Uh, thanks very much for your time, everyone. I hope you've, uh, I hope this has helped, and we will uh, we'll reconvene at the same time next week. And like I say, feel free to join uh, any of those groups that I've highlighted there. And um, and certainly, if you've got a futures account, be sure to uh, be sure to join me in the uh, Telegram channel where you will uh, you'll get real time access to to me and my trading. Okay, guys, thanks very much, everyone, and, uh, and I'll catch you at the same time next week.